I guess my question is um, uh, where you've indicated in the letter that you're having you're, you're having a problem connecting with the, the state fire marshal. Is that what's going on with that? So, Lynn Benander, president yeah. and CEO of Northeast Fire Diesel. Um, we, we have been trying for about a year and a half to get through a third party review process that the state fire marshal asked us to do after our after we finished the second phase of our building. Right. And um, the state fire marshal who serves this part of the state uh, resigned. And so there's only who is that? Uh, Dana. Yes. I don't know his last name. Uh, so there's an, there's only one person, Jake Neuenbauer, who's okay. this doing that. He's not the state fire marshal. It's the state safety inspector or something okay. like that. There used to be two, now there's one. And he's just backlogged. Um, so we have a third party review requirement, but it's not clear how to go through it. So we're waiting for direction. And we it hasn't it hasn't been clear what it is. We're willing to do whatever we need to do. Okay. But since May of two thousand twelve we've been trying to move that process forward and we have not been successful. So what's it gonna take to do that. You'll have to ask Mr. Neuenbauer. Okay. Um, I had, um, okay, I'll, I'll tell you where, where my concerns are because this is, this is what's going to come up at the next, at the meeting. Um, I guess I, as I go through the various pieces, um, there's, there's two, I have two, I have one major area of concern. The one major area of concern is I, I, I don't have a clear picture of who um, reviews, who designs, reviews, and approves the um, process piping. And you, if, if I made, I could be using horrible terminology, but let me explain. So basically the piping that goes from the tanks to the processor, how does that work? Right now we've been asked to submit that to Mark Snow as okay. part of our third phase building permit process. Okay. And we have submitted. So that has been draft. submitted? A draft. Okay, so I can contact Mark Snow at least and and, and the technical review that, that you requested yes. at your last meeting. I had a hard time because right. Eric didn't want to have it. Eric and didn't so, do anything with it. So I did meet with Mark Snow and Ed Jarvis presented all of the plans, showed you know nothing's changed with the second building permit, all the steps along the way. I gave them all of okay. the and prep I for our third building permit, but. You know, right. I think they're. I think they're all set. The only thing they asked was that I hear back from Jake Neuenbauer about how to go through the third-party review. That's the only thing outstanding from both Captain Jarvis and Mark Snow okay. that they presented and shared at that meeting. I will definitely talk to Mark. I had, I had a, a question based on um, the email that was an email that was sent to us, and I don't know if I can get the chain right. Um, but it was from Paul DiCarlo to Carl Koslowski, Bob Seppi, Lynn Benender. And in it, I'm going to read this paragraph. It says, Carl, you're going to look at methanol inside in the tank that is currently des designated as methylene. Um, they're both class one products. Is there anything in the code that prevents the chain change? I understand Bob's thoughts and objections, but management wants to reduce cost and use of the interior tank for methanol and totes for methylate inside will reduce the cost of adding a methanol tank outside piping and fencing. Um, so this, our, our original permit was for the methanol tank inside? No, it was for outside. Our original permit was for... No, it was outside. We changed it to outside. No, the, uh, no. the original permit was outside. The methylate tanks were inside. Correct. The methylate totes. The, the original plan had, had methylate totes mm -hmm. inside and it had a methylene, methanol tank outside. I'm right. positive of that because I was, I had a huge concern over the methylate totes inside. Yes. At some revision, I believe this is the one that you brought forward, mm -hmm. you were pretty um, clear that you had abandoned the idea of methylate in totes and that you were going to go with direct piping. Okay, but then I found out uh, that there is no American manufacturer of methylate. This is a particular methylate compound called potassium methylate. It's right. unusual in sure. the industry. Uh, we talked about that the last meeting. It is required for our particular process, and uh, this comes only from two sources in the world, one in Chile and one in Germany. 
And neither one of them is able to supply it in bulk. They can only supply it in drums, which is very inefficient, and totes. Totes being the more efficient container for us. Okay. So um, it, it has to come in in plastic uh, totes. Those are wire caged uh, boxes. Uh, yes, they are. Okay. Um, now, I suppose it could be transferred, but that doesn't seem to have any advantage to transferring it. It has to be kept out of uh, cold weather. It has a, uh, a cloud point or a freeze point of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have to keep it basically in, in the conditioned space. Uh, and uh, we, we simply cannot buy it in bulk the way I thought we could. Um, and this this occurs for both the potassium and the sodium methylate bulk? Sodium methylate is available in bulk. Uh, and sodium methylate has less of a problem with this cold temperature reaction. But it doesn't really work with the uh, waste-based uh, conversion process. It's more appropriate for virgin soy and, and other types of... Uh, higher quality resources. So, so at this point you're pretty sure that you're going to be running this plant using the potassium that is only available in time. That's, that is the, uh, okay. for, certainly for the first few years. That's, so, that's what we're so that we need to get straight and corrected on the permit because um, I don't think it's spelled out that way. Um, and at least I looked at a few of the plans and it's, yeah. So the methylate is going to be stored inside? Well, that's what we're, we're talking about. So the, it has to be. It has to be, really. It has to be. 50 degrees, it starts to cloud up. Okay, well then that means I, I want to go back and look at the plans more carefully to understand how you're moving it off the loading dock. Yep. And can you... I can tell you, basically. You can give me the summary, but I'll, I'll look at the plan. Sure. Yeah. It's going to be by um, hand-operated lift truck. Uh, not by uh, forklift, mm -hmm. not by uh, uh, a uh, conveying a person conveying vehicle by hand push uh, fork hydraulic. Lift. Okay, I know what those are. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that's a little slower, less power, less energy, but it is uh, relatively safe. Okay. And the and the methanol final determination on that. That will all be uh, in, in closed piping, uh, no exposed methanol anywhere. But uh, so where will the tank be? Well, the preferred location is we have a stainless steel certified 8,000 gallon tank indoors. Mm -hmm. If we're not able to fill it with sodium methylate, it would be far preferable for us to fill it with the methyl alcohol. They're the same, it's the same liquid from a fire safety standpoint. Methyl yeah, but I thought there, and, uh, but in the first design, we, we had a lot of um, explanation about the methanol and why it had to go outside in a special concrete lined magazine which was partially built. Okay, it was a double wall mild steel tank. Um, right, but there's a concrete And there is a concrete bunker. saddle for it. Yep, there is really. Uh, that has no further purpose in my opinion at this point. I cannot see, nor have I ever remembered seeing any explanation why the methanol should be outside. Um, I thought it was for vapor and venting mm, and fire. Mm, no, all of, all the tanks, all the tanks are going to be vented to the outdoors through closed piping with a pressure vacuum release valves at the end of it. So uh, it doesn't vent unless there's any buildup of pressure uh, or vacuum. Um, so um, again, I don't see. There's no release of methyl alcohol inside the building whatsoever. Um, those were my questions, and I think those are the things that I, I want to follow up with. I guess I still have a question about the methanol tank. I think you've explained um, why the uh, situation with the uh, uh, methylate has changed, and you've changed the process. That certainly makes sense to me. Um, so why don't we get you on for February, and it's up to I'll get the questions answered that I need to get. Right. And we'll try to get you a uh, um, final plan. Um, have the tech review. No, no, they did not have the tech review, but it's not because of them. Um, it's because Eric and the planning department made a determination that he didn't think it was necessary. But it was not because of them. Mm -hmm. One other. We keep talking about sprinkler systems, but yeah. it's really going to be carbon dioxide, isn't it? So no, the uh, interior sprinkler system is a wet system. You know, it is set up as a wet system. There is a sprinkler system on the loading dock, which is a dry system. 
Yeah. Uh, but interior is water. And foam. I thought and foam. when you had oil products, that you didn't like to use water on it because it spreads it. I thought that they use carbon dioxide. That's why you have carbon dioxide. Both our, both our fire safety engineer who designed the plan and the third party reviewer who's an engineer uh, have worked with the fire department and designed this water based system. Water based? It's yeah. all going back to water now. Yeah. I mean, I, all right. I don't have any experience with process engineering, but I certainly mm -hmm. can tell you that fire suppression is going back to water. And we, we, it's the safest. <laughs> it's more of it too. Yeah, it's the okay. safest, and, 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 the, and the and the technology is understood. And um, um, but okay, um, I guess that's where we are with this. So okay, we'll um, we'll certainly have this on yes. February, and we'll get it wrapped up, question? please. Yes. Um, is my understanding that the license that we have in. Um, it's the, it's the location of the tank, whether the methanol is inside or outside, is not. It, we've been at, we've asked for a certain number of gallons of capacity of storage. Is that correct on the license? Um, but you would you would like to see the, an updated. It's got to be by the, the license should be contain have containers and locations of containers. Contents. Contents. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we we certainly. Um, understand that you need to be somewhat flexible with the different greases and oils and we can't, you know, you may have one thing in here one week and I understand that, but I, I guess we just want to pin down the locations of all the hazardous stuff. Um, um, but I think we do want to absolutely know, obviously, where the methanol tank is going to be. And, and at the beginning and at the end. You know. And so the, the license that we've applied for has the methanol tank outside. I believe, and that, and without that, looking at it, I'm going to say yes. And and so we're thinking of changing it. We haven't made that change yet. But if you, you want, want to us, make that change, um, uh, have it uh, before our next meeting. And have the fire chief sign it because he has to sign the application. And mm -hmm. so if you're amending the application, that needs to be signed off by the fire chief. Good. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't. We can just go with it as is. Yeah, I I guess. I'll just tell you my sense is based mm -hmm. on some of the research that I've done mm -hmm. is, um, and, and this, this is actually related to a plant that exploded. Um, and believe it or not, it actually said in the explosion report, things went a lot better because the methanol tank was not in the building. Okay, so that's what I read in, I think it was an explosion in Kansas. And it was, the plant was about half the size of this one, as near as I can tell. Um, so, it was expressed so definitively at the beginning that the tank needed to be outside. It's a little bit odd to be hearing for a change, so that is something that I want to research anymore. And, you, and if you are changing it, I, you should have some supporting documentation about why that's a good idea. I certainly can understand that, yeah, it's easier to keep it under a roof and the piping doesn't need to go as far. And there's, but for whatever reason, I, that did show up in, in a report that I saw. And, and if we have our engineer and the third party engineer and the fire chief all signing off on that, do you need other documentation saying that that would be okay? At this point, no. I mean, but um, the question is, is whether, um, I can't say what other reviews we might want on this project. At this point, I think you, you've certainly gone through enough steps. Um, but if there is other documentation or other expertise you want us to bring, if you could I will let, let us you know, know soon, yeah. that yeah. would be useful. I, I, I'm thinking that my, my concern is more as, as you get further along, and I guess what I've seen through this project and what kind of bothers me about this project is the fact that everything seems to have changed not everything, but a good number of things that are very critical have changed through the life cycle and it's not even built yet. Which means that I want assurances that what actually gets built has a final review before it gets turned out. Because when you see a project with all these changes, that's where the mistakes happen. And it's at the end where this thing got changed and that plan didn't keep up with that change and that's when you have problems. Um, and so I'll take that up with the building inspector and the fire chief, and we'll certainly talk about it next month. Anything else? Good.
Anybody on the board have questions? Comments? There's a question about a set of planes, too. As I understand, they're in Mark Snow's office, so I should be able to go over there and look at them. Yeah, good. And I will do that. Take Bill with me. I'll take Bill with me. <laughs> you still have a license, right? Yep. <laughs> Is Paul DeCarlo not involved in this process? Not he was the one at the last one. Yeah, not at this. He was a volunteer working at that point, and he's not. Uh, right so now he has a, another full-time job, but... This so is a community-based. So you're you're the full timer now, and I have and been. Since I know you have, and you're yeah. you're on board now. You were before, but you're you're the still here. Tom is okay. in the same role. He's always been. Okay. Great. Anybody else questions? I ain't stamping nothing. You're not stamping anything. Okay. Thanks for coming in, and we'll we'll get this we'll get this ironed out. Uh. Are we off camera?